Hello everybody, Bill Harrison here with Harden Power Systems. Wanted to take just a couple minutes and, uh, and give you a, uh, an introduction to a new product that we are real excited about. It's been quite a long time in the making. Um, I know some of you folks think it's overdue, but uh, uh, we did it as quickly as we could do it and, uh, and still do it right. Um, and I'm losing my mic. The, uh, many of you are probably familiar with the standard juice box. And this is a, uh, a machine that uh, it's a 110 volt and 12 volt uh, portable power supply, um, 24 amp hours of DC power in the battery bank, 400 watt inverter, uh, a lot of campers, hunters, preppers, some emergency services, some military, um, uh, a lot of ham guys, um, a lot of uses for this. Uh, but of course, as is often the case with battery power, you never really have enough. Um, uh, batteries are always an issue. And uh, as much as we'd like to fit more juice in here, uh, we haven't been able to. 24 amp hours um, using an AGM style battery is, uh, is about as good as it gets. Um, they're good batteries. It's rock solid technology. They don't uh, leak or spill or anything like that. They're very solid. Um, but nonetheless, many people have, uh, have opted to buy uh, a juice box, um, which I guess I need to get in the habit of calling a Mark I because now we have the Mark II. But in any event, uh, they buy a, a juice box Mark I and then they, they also purchase a juice brick, which is uh, another product we make that's also built into an ammo can and it's got 48 amp hours of energy. That juice brick can be pigtailed to a juice box and uh, you know, obviously you've just tripled your battery bank. Um, a lot of folks running like CPAP machines and medical equipment or uh, booths uh, at expos, vendors, um, some ham guys that are pretty serious wind up using the juice box Mark I uh, combined with the juice brick. Now, um, what we're able to uh, what we're able to offer now, which is very cool, and please understand, the, the juice box Mark I is going to be around for a long time. It's definitely going to stay as part of our product line. It is, uh, uh, it is still, to my knowledge, um, the most economical way that you can get this kind of a system on your doorstep. Um, uh, and if your power needs are such that 24 amp hours is enough, if you just want to run a laptop for a weekend, charge a cell phone, you know, a hundred times or whatever, um, this is this is enough. And uh, and the Mark One is going to be around for a long time. Um, that said, it's it's now got a big brother, and the big brother is the Mark II. Uh, the red stencil. I don't know. Maybe we'll go with that. Maybe that's that's how we'll differentiate it. Um, uh, not sure. But just like the juice box Mark I, the Mark II is built into a surplus night vision optic ammo can. Uh, waterproof, crush proof. Uh, well, I say that and I can regret it later. It's almost crush proof. It's definitely waterproof. Um, one of the things that uh, that is unique about the about the Mark II is the battery technology. We're using uh, what are called lipo um, lithium ferrophosphate batteries. Um, they are not cheap. Um, our, our cost on the batteries that go into this, and again, this is our cost landed, is uh, is just shy of three hundred dollars just for the batteries. Um, uh, that said, because the battery technology is what it is, and because the battery bank is bigger, the, the charger is bigger. The Juice Box Mark I uses a 3 amp Schumacher charger, real good charger. Um, the Mark II uses a 10 amp charger. We're mostly doing that because we can. Um, the uh, LifePo batteries have a very impressive charge and discharge rates. You can really hit them hard, um, putting energy in or taking energy out. So in any event, it's got a 10 amp automatic charger. And that's also a worldwide charger. So unlike the juice box, the charger, or I'm sorry, unlike the Mark I, the Mark II juice box has a, a 
a charger that will uh, sense worldwide voltage. Um, uh, that's been an issue for some customers, and uh, we've built custom machines to accommodate that. With the Mark II, not an issue. Um, the uh, the solar controller in the Mark II is a uh, is a 10 amp, whereas the Mark I is a four and a half amp. The Mark I four and a half amp makes sense because you could, you max out at about 60 or 70 watts of solar, which is appropriate for a 24 amp battery bank. You know, you're talking four or five hours you can charge the system if you max out the solar controller. The 10 amp solar controller in this um, is uh, is awesome. It's also an automatic charger, um, but you can put up to 120 watts of solar into this thing. Um, you could actually push it to about 150, um, but I think in documentation and Officially, we're going to say 120 watts. That's definitely comfortable. Um, now, all that said, probably the coolest thing about this is these lithium iron phosphate batteries. Don't confuse them with lithium like, oh my god, they blew up type lithium batteries. That's not what these are. Um, they're far more stable. They're non-toxic. They're very tolerant to heat and cold and to shock and vibration and impact. You can find this information online. Look it up for yourself. These are this is neat stuff, um, uh, and uh, because of all of that, these batteries, we're able to have a machine that's obviously the same size as the Mark One, but this is 24 amp hours energy density storage. This is 40, and believe it or not, even though even though the charger is bigger and heavier and the solar controller is bigger and heavier and there's other things going on in here, the battery itself is 40 amp hours and it's lighter than the batteries in the Mark I. Um, you get what you pay for. Uh, if you've got a reason to want that additional power um, and the additional capability, well, then maybe the Mark II is the machine you should have. Um, one of the uh, one of the very impressive things about LifePo batteries is the, uh, is, the, is the expected life cycle. With AGMs, I'm used to telling people three to 400 charge cycles. Um, that number mostly comes from a kind of an average of various manufacturers. I honestly think it's, it's a little bit less than that um, because people tend to, to, to abuse their stuff um, somewhat, and that's okay. That's part of what we build is to try to, to accommodate that. But you know, you run a battery dead flat and leave it for a while, um, and and you've shortened its life. It's not going to perform like it did in the lab. So anyway, if an AGM is, is say about 300 expected uh, complete charge discharge cycles, um, these are 2,000, and that's a big deal, especially if uh, if you only want to have to buy something once. And once you've got it, it's done, and uh, and. I mean, obviously, 2,000 charge cycles. There might be some people running CPAP machines or oxygen concentrators or, or, uh, or uh, feed pumps or something. That yeah, maybe every three or four years they'll actually kill that battery and have to replace it. Um, but most of us, most of the time, using these things on weekends or during circumstances when we need it or camping or because you lose power or, or even if you're a ham radio, <laughs> I'd give you even money. This is a lifetime battery. It's probably pretty darn close to that. Um, so that's very impressive. Um, uh, and I guess if you would come on up closer, we'll take a look at the faceplate, give people an idea. Um, one of the things that we're, we're doing that's a bit, a bit different with the, uh, with the Mark II, uh, obviously it's prettier. Uh, uh, the the faceplate's being cut CNC, and uh, part of it is because there's simply more going on. Uh, the juice box Mark I is straightforward enough, generally. That uh, if you've got a piece of gear like that, you probably know how to run it just out of the box. There's a little more going on with with the Mark II, um, uh, and uh, uh, the can is completely filled. So unlike the Mark I, there is no provision in the Mark II for an internal solar panel. Um, there's two reasons for that. One, we don't have the space. This thing is full. Um, the other is that with the increased capacity of this system, a 10 watt panel like we run in the Mark I juice box is simply not enough to be taken seriously. Um, you have to figure that uh, about 25 watts is, is about the minimum uh, uh, to use with a system like this and have it be worth your while. And a 25 watt panel definitely is not fitting in this case. Um, but uh, we do have uh, an integrated AC charging 
uh, plug. Uh, I like doing that because you don't have anything to lose. You know, it's connected. Um, you've got uh, the on-off for the, the charging system. This is different than the Mark I. It's important here because the bigger charger has an internal fan that's trying to manage more heat. Um, and we needed a way for you to be able to disable that. Um, so if you, uh, if you had the system on but you didn't want the charger's fan to turn on based on heat, you could turn it off. Um, two 115-volt uh, sockets. Uh, on off for the inverter, not unlike the Mark I juice box, a little slicker maybe, a little cleaner. Um, and this is actually a 450 watt inverter, whereas the juice box is 400. Um, also in the Mark II, the inverter is made by Samlex. Uh, oh, we're happy with the inverter in the Mark I, they're good inverters, but these Samlex inverters are, uh, are probably a bit tougher. Um, they're certainly more expensive, they're nicer, um, but, uh, but it's comparable, it's 450 watts instead of 400. You've got two Anderson power poles, just like on the juice box, uh, Mark I. One thing that is different, um, and it takes a little more time and trouble, but we're happy to do it because of the, the benefit. The juice box Mark I has a USB port that's powered thanks to the inverter. So you turn the inverter on, and that's how you produce USB power. And that works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But there's a phantom load associated with even turning an inverter on. Uh, it's not much, but it's there. And if it matters to you, it can be a problem. Um, uh, because over time, the inverter is going to pull a lot of your energy. And maybe all you're trying to do is charge a little cell phone via USB. Um, so in any event, in the Mark II, we've got two different dedicated, uh, they're called buck transformers. They're very efficient. Two, uh, two separate dedicated transformers. So each of these USB ports is pushing 3 amps. That's a lot of power. That's similar to our, our little military Weevil um, uh, suffice to say, with these two ports, you know, you could charge two or three full-size iPads at the same time. Uh, you could run a splitter off of these and charge six, eight, ten cell phones at once. Um, uh, one thing we do have uh, in the Mark II that's uh, better, I think, is the solar input is the DC barrel. The Mark I has that, but it also has the power film compatible socket, which works, but it's big, it's clunky. Um, this is, is more compact, it's more efficient, uh, it's just frankly nicer. Um, and uh, thanks to the engraving, we're able to put some critical information on the faceplate. I guess go ahead and set back up if you would. And uh, because we're, we're able to put more info right here, we can put it in front of you. So if you're, whatever, stressed out or tired or confused or the lights are out or you just don't have time to pull out a laminated quick reference card, um, you can find what you need to right there. Um, okay, so I think I've covered specs. You've got a 40 amp hour battery bank, 10 amp charger, 10 amp solar controller, worldwide voltage, the upgraded USB, the 450 watt inverter, the fact that there is not a solar panel, it is the same size. Oh, the uh, <laughs> even though you've got all this added capability, um, these two machines weigh the same, within a few ounces of each other. Um, this is like 29 pounds plus some change, and this is uh, just just over 30 or just under 30. Um, but very impressive. Uh, and uh, depending on your pocketbook and your needs, this might be the ticket. Maybe it means that you don't have to buy a Mark I plus a juice brick. And if that's the case, that's cool because you only have one thing to worry about. Um, and uh, we have established retail pricing. The Mark II is going to be $950 USD. Um, the, uh, the, the pre-launch, we are going to do this again. Uh, we, it, it has worked out really well when we do a pre-launch uh, at a discounted price because we're not a big outfit. And one of the things that helps us is uh, when we're bringing a new item online with new components and new stuff that we need, when folks step up, and pre-buy at a discount. It helps us fill that supply chain up and, uh, and we start seeing our shelves fill up with the pieces we need. Um, so uh, I was gonna say it would be for a week, but we're not gonna put a time frame on it. It's gonna be more based on the number of units. Um, but for probably something like a week, at least a few days, maybe a week or so, uh, we're gonna have some links on the website where you can buy the, uh, the Juice Box Mark II for $850. So uh, we still make a little bit of money on it. 
It's a big savings to the consumer, but it helps us a lot because it helps us get everything kind of spooled up and up to speed and get these things under our belt and moving out the door. Um, uh, so again, the full retail price will be $950. I will happily stack that price point and these features up against anything you can buy out there. And if you ask somebody, praise God, you ask somebody that has any of our gear, ask them how it's put together. Ask them what's different about it. Because we know what's different about it because we build this stuff. Um, so in any event, $950 retail, $850 for maybe a week or so. We'll see how many units we move. Um, this is uh, Wednesday. We'll probably have the website updated tomorrow sometime. Um, we will make a posting on Facebook. We'll make a posting on Twitter. Uh, this video, of course, is going to be up on YouTube. Uh, so please, come visit us at PortableUniversalPower.com. Check out our Facebook page, Harden Power. Our Twitter account is Harden Power. The YouTube account is Harden Power. Um, you can call us here at the office. We're all real reachable. Um, love hearing from our customers. And uh, uh, I guess one last thing I'd say, <laughs> we're excited about this thing because of, what's, what, uh, because of what it'll do. I, uh, I continue to be impressed. This is 540 watt hours in a can. Any of you nerds out there that, that hear that know what I'm talking about. Um, you want to run a campsite for a weekend? You might even forget the solar panel and still be able to run a campsite for a weekend off of this little box. Um, uh, but I don't want the Mark I getting jealous. This is still a neat machine. Buy a bunch of these two. These have their place. But this is about the juice box Mark II. So, folks, this is Bill Harrison. I really appreciate your time. And uh, if, you, uh, if you're all excited about making darn sure you make the pre-launch pricing, but you look at the website and it's not updated, just shoot an email to sales at portableuniversalpower.com and put Mark II or Mark II launch or something in the subject line, and we'll see that. And as soon as we update the website, we're going to send out an email to everybody that's expressing interest so they know that, uh, that it's time to jump on, the, uh, jump on the opportunity to get a discounted machine. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. You take care now. Bye-bye.